Meanwhile, there are a series of hearings that are going on the Hill with regard to abortion law. And the left seems to think that since the overruling of Roe versus Wade and Dobbs, that the winds of change are with them. They seem to think that the American people have sided with them on the question of the morality of abortion, and they are not reading the room correctly. Most Americans have a sort of wishy-washy in the middle opinion on abortion. This seems to be what all the polling shows. Americans want heavy restrictions in the last trimester. They want some restrictions in the second trimester. They don't want nearly as many restrictions in the first trimester. That seems to be what the polling shows. None of that suggests that women have an, a right to choose from point of birth all the way backwards. Like no, no, Nobody actually thinks that. That, that, is a, that is a position held by a vast minority of the American population. And yet that's precisely the argument Democrats are making. Right? Democrats, all they have to do is say that there is a trade-off in development and that you have... This would not be an intellectually honest argument, but it would be a politically effective one. There's a trade-off in the development of the, of the human embryo from an embryo to a fetus. And as the child grows more developed, it now has more of an interest in life that has countervailing interest against the choice rights of the mother. And thus, as you grow later in the pregnancy, there should be more restrictions. But earlier in the pregnancy, when the child is not as developed, then we should be less restrictive. And that seems to be what, what Americans feel, even if, if it isn't particularly coherent. But Democrats can't make that argument. And so instead, what they have decided is that it is a fundamental equality principle that women be able to abort kids at whim all the way up until birth. And, and if you deny this, this is because you are denying women. And as they now call them, pregnant people or people capable of being pregnant. And so you've seen Democratic witness after Democratic witness get up there in front of Congress and just make fools of themselves, sound demonic in the way that they describe pregnancy and the way that they describe the, the treatment of preborn children. So, for example, one abortion witness was named Sarah Lopez. She was testifying in front of the Senate hearing on abortion and women's health care. And uh, she described the abortion that she got. And this is just, it sounds like direct from the mouth of Satan. I mean, that, that, that is what this sounds like. It's unbelievable. And I'm not a person who invokes Satan a lot, but this sounds satanic. What these restrictions are intended to do is try and make people, try and stop people from having abortions. But abortion is health care. Um, my abortion was the best decision I ever made. It was an act of self-love. And I'm here today to make sure that everybody who currently needs an abortion, who has had an abortion or will need an abortion, is not alone, no matter what the state tries to force upon us. The best decision she ever made, like all the decisions in her entire life? What if she'd made a better decision with regard to uh, not getting pregnant in the first place? It was the best decision she ever made, ever. Like truly, the killing of the preborn baby. That, like of all the decisions, it wasn't a decision she made with regret. It wasn't that she had to weigh the balances of, of the scales of human life against her future hopes. It wasn't any of that. It wasn't safe, legal, and rare. It wasn't a woman in anguish attempting to, to deal with the realities and hardships of parenting. It wasn't any of that. It was the best decision. She, it was an act of self-love. Now that at least is honest. It was an act of self-love. It was an act of other hate, but it was also an act of self-love because it was really it's about loving yourself at the expense of an actual other human being. Earlier, producer Bradford was asking me, do these people even hear themselves? And the answer is they do, but they think that no one else hears them other than like they think that in their bubble, they believe they are the greatest people who have ever lived. And therefore everyone else must hear them that way because all they've gotten for years is validation by other people who agree with them about this perverse cultish view. When she talks about abortion there, she sounds horrific. I mean, that, name a person who is, who is committed an evil act of death upon another person who didn't believe that it was an act of good for them. That's typically how it works. I don't know how people believe that, that the left has the moral high ground on these issues when they speak like this. I really don't. That wasn't the only Democratic witness brought forth. There was an abortion witness named Dr. Kristen Brandy and she testified that abortion is liberation. It is worth celebrating. Shout your abortion. For some, abortion is liberation. There's a lot of good that comes from a people's ability to access abortion. And I want to celebrate that. Celebrate it. It's worth celebrating. It's, there's so much good that comes from it. This is not the regretful attitude toward abortion that most Americans have, even if they are pro-choice. This, th this is a perverse view of why you are the center of the universe and everything ought to revolve around you. And this is, this is a two-year-old view of the universe in which everybody is there to serve you and you have no obligations to anyone else. And it is worth celebrating. And this stuff is incoherent. And if Democrats really want to run on this nationally, they're going to get clocked and they should be clocked. Meanwhile, the president of the National Women's Law Center cannot actually define the word woman. I mean, this is how far left they have moved. Her name is Fatina Goss Graves. 
And she's asked, what is a woman? You literally run a thing called the National Women's Law Center. So what is a woman? No answer. I was hoping that you could define what a woman is for us in this committee hearing. Well, as the president of the National Women's Law Center, you can imagine I say woman a lot uh, in my day job. Okay, uh, so I'm just uh, asking I, for the de definition. I'm, so, and, and so what I'll tell you is I am a woman. That's how I identify. Okay. But I wonder, however, if in part the reason that you're asking a question is that you're trying to suggest that people who I am don't simply asking the question and I simply want an answer. I, and so I, I think it's actually really important to be very clear here that there are people who identify as non-binary. I think okay, about five percent right. of we're, we're, young we're people. We're not going to go there. I was hoping maybe you would. I was hoping that you, maybe you would say something that maybe we learned in um, high school biology that has to do with X and Y chromosomes, but uh, which define male and female. But I guess we're not going to get there. Okay, and we're of course we're we're not going to get there because these witnesses have no relationship with reality. She says, I say the word women a lot. It's like, okay, so define it. And she's like, well, I, I won't. Then what do you do for a living? What is it you would say that you do around here? Now, in the end, when they're really confronted with these questions, Democrats then have to go to their fallback argument, which is that if you dare question why a woman would have an abortion, it's because you have a low opinion of women. Women actually do have anguish. Well, you can't have it both ways. Either it's worth celebrating and it's an act of self-love or it's something you ought to be anguished over, in which case there should be restrictions on it. This is how you end up with the, the fallback sort of position of Georgia State Representative Renita Shannon. Right, here she is trying to explain that if you, if you believe that some women are pretty flippant about the lives of the unborn children within them, then that is because you have a low opinion of pregnant women, which again is a mutually exclusive argument with the idea you ought to celebrate abortion. Starting with Ms. Lopez, I assume you agree with infanticide, the killing of a child, a perfectly healthy child at birth. I don't accept the basis of that question, but Pardon? I do believe abortion is health care. I'm talking about, do you agree? I, I know, I get that, but do you agree? I mean, are you in, do you support infanticide, killing the child after he's born? I do not agree with the basis of that question, What's but the I basis? do believe that abortion is health care. Okay, so I'll take that as a yes, you do agree with infanticide. Mrs. Shannon, do you agree with infanticide? Well, I think you're using um, inflammatory language to basically describe a situation that does not happen. We don't have infanticide happening. Doctors would not do that, and neither would folks who have carried pregnancy. Okay, would a healthy child, do you agree if a healthy child is born, that is that woman's right to decide if it lives or dies? What I think is, based on your question, you have a very low opinion of pregnant people. It's amazing. I mean, why don't you just say, no, I don't believe that it should be a woman's right to choose. You can't say that. Instead, it's, well, to even ask the question means you have a low opinion of pregnant people. It's, it's all a mess. It's a complete mess. Did you know that every single like creates one additional leftist here? That is just science.